Welcome back, you're watching Jim Resman, we are in Satisfactory. This time we are going to do some smart plating. Oh yes, you may understand that we do have a little space elevator problem, because if we go into our research station, we can see that the next tier is locked by the space elevators phase 1. So we of course need to build and find a nice place for the space elevator and then we need to construct these smart plating. The thing with smart plating is however that they have to be put together in an assembler. And this is not the only time we will need smart plating. So the best thing to do in this situation is to make a closed off automated smart plating manufacturing facility that only does smart plating. Now I think I told you about this a little bit earlier, but um, on certain sites around the map there are hard drives uh, hidden. And in these hard drives um, you can search for new recipes. Um, and I already took out this hard drive here, but I'm going to show you uh, like what it looks like. At these crash sites you have these areas and you need to put in something there and then you'll get a material omen. Um, and then you'll get the hard drive if you just offer some power or some parts or something like that to open drop pods. Maybe some less uh, lucky um, pioneers. But anyways, we can steal our hard drives and for that we can do something called alter uh, alternative recipes, yeah? Uh, and for this little video we are going to use one alternative recipe, but it's going to be completely optional because I don't want to lock out anything. Uh, the thing is, if we use this alternative recipe, it will be a lot easier to make this facility, uh, it will take less space. Uh, and it will be slightly, slightly, slightly less efficient. We will be using 37.5 ingots per minute instead of 37. So, the alternative I've unlocked is cast screw. And we basically, with this recipe, can cast screws from 5 iron ingots and make a lot of screws per minute. So we don't need a mill step uh, to make uh, it with rods. So that recipe just simplifies the thing, it doesn't change anything and uh, you know we're going to need 148 screws per minute. So that is four machines and uh, in an earlier tutorial I showed you how to make uh, screws in an efficient way. So here we have the facility, we have uh, rods parting up like that. And this one makes 120 screws per minute uh, like this. So it's basically the same method as before. So if you don't have unlocked the alternative cast screw recipe, just if you don't remember, look back at my earlier basic iron manufacturing tutorial and you'll see how to make efficient screws there. And if you do that, you will be slightly, slightly, slightly more efficient. Not that it matters too much. But that's basically that. I have found a new area which we are going to use for our smart plating facility um, and a new little source. I've set up some basic parts, uh, we've done this in the previous videos like all of them so I just did it here. This is a pure iron source, it gives 120 uh, ore per minute, we're not gonna need all of it uh, but we are parting it up like this. So we have four smelters and they're working at 100% clock speed, uh, which gives 120 ingots per minute. So this is our baseline output, 120 ingots per minute. Remember your Mark II belts here. So how are we going to do this? Well, there are two ways to do this. I drawn like actual papers here, as you can hear, they're like big. Uh, and uh, there are two ways to do it. Either we produce too many iron plates or we just make like less of everything. So we have the reinforced iron plate here. And by the way, I unlock this alternative recipe. We won't be using this because it requires a higher mark belt than we have. So it doesn't matter. But this 
regular reinforced plates, you can see we make five per minute, yeah? And the rotors, we make four per minute. So four plus five, you know, four and five, they're not equal. And if we go here and select smart plating, you can see we need an equal amount reinforced iron plates as we do rotors. Which means that if we have one assembler making rotors and one assembler making reinforced plates, we will be uh, making things unevenly. Not cool. So what we could do is to output the excess iron plates um, into a container. Uh, and to do that, we would need to do a, uh, would be called a load balancing system. The thing is, however, a load balancing system that does this can't do it exactly efficient because five is a tricky number. And I did my calculations here and I come up with it's possible to do this load balancer, but it requires um, nine splitters and mergers, inputting and outputting in different areas. Uh, and if we do that, it will, um, let's see here, uh, we will get th uh, 3.957 into one while we would have needed four. So it's almost okay. And 1.04 extra iron plates into another area. Uh, so we are not going to do that load balancing system because I feel like it's, it's taking too much space and complexity to the system. So we should limit the production to make as much iron plates as we do rotors. So rotors is the lower number. So we're going to underclock the reinforced iron plates uh, to be making four per minute. And we are then going to, uh, well, adjust the rest of the production accordingly. So I've done the calculations and setup for that. So let's build. So I've drawn the ingot line right up here so we can build in that direction. And one thing that can be a good idea, a good idea is to actually to drag the conveyor lines longer than you need them and then you can shorten them off uh, later. It's easier. Um, also, you can see here, I'm actually going to leave space for this thing to be drawn out later uh, because in the future we can upgrade this thing to a minor mark 2 and then we can output more iron from this facility. So sometimes it can be smart to bring some upgrade capabilities to your system. So that's exactly what we're doing here. But uh, that's not something we will bother with now. We will just make sure that the uh, output of the... Uh, well, uh, or the iron ore of course, will be easily... Uh, upgradable later on. In any case, we shall now set up the production of reinforced um, arm plates and uh, rotors. So to do that, we'll begin with uh, just arm plates, screws and iron rods. That's the three things we need. So here we have, uh, here we have where we will be making the arm plates. So uh, we will also be making rods down the line here. So uh, from this 120 belt, which is of course not going to go that speed, but um, we're going to add a little splitter so we can drag it down here and we will require 56 ingots per minute. So it suffices with a Mark 1 belt here and it will balance itself out later on. Now just to not clutter the way here, we are just adding one of these a little bit of a uh, lift so that we can walk under it. And remember that when you do this, you can click like R if they are in the if they are in the wrong direction. But for this type, it doesn't you know do that. It's just if you are a connection connection point that doesn't have a direction. And that's wrong. And there we go. So how much do we need here? Well, <clears throat> we do not need to run at full speed. We do not. So this thing is going to make arm plates and we will need in total um, 24 arm plates per minute. So this one can be underclocked. So it only makes uh, 12. And it's very nice. You can see here we record then 18 ingots per minute. And the nice thing here is that we can look at this thing, press Ctrl C and look at this thing and press Ctrl V 
And if you look into this thing, now you can see this is also set up to make uh, iron plates 12 per minute. And we will merge these so we have 24 per minute. And underclocking, as you remember from earlier videos, is more efficient. So then we have iron rods and they make 15 per minute, uh, but we need 20 per minute. So instead of overclocking this and be less efficient, we're going to have two of them and underclock them and see if we can get that's close enough. And we can see we require each 10, 10 ingots per minute because the rods are <laughs> like a pack of rods is like one ingot or one iron rod. That's, yeah. But anyways, uh, then we have 20 there, so we will merge them. Uh, and these values, we did that just because, well, um, in the uh, assembler, this is basically what we will require. So now we are up to making the screws also. So we'll set up the screw manufacturing behind here. And uh, to do this underclocked way, uh, that will do exactly... Uh, by the way, in the end, we're going to make... Uh, um, I think it is exactly four smart plating per minute. Um, so it will be quite efficient, very easy setup, closed system, doesn't need any maintenance, should just work very nice. But anyways, we should be making screws back here. And as I said before, you can look at my basic uh, arm manufacturing tutorial to just set up screws. Um, instead of doing the 120 uh, screws per minute, you'll of course need to part it up a little bit because you'll need... Uh, you'll need 148 so that's uh, and since the belt is limited by 120 in speed we can't uh, merge them all together we'll need to kind of part them up into uh, several belts otherwise we won't be able to do it but since the cast screws is one of the absolutely most basic and popular uh, recipes you should really unlock that so i will just assume that everyone um, did unlock that so, um, we're going to add one, two, and three. And if you look here, alternative cast screws makes 50 screws per minute. We only need 148 screws per minute, so we can underclock one of these machines a little bit, uh, but we can do that later on. Uh, so we're just gonna connect them up to the, uh, well, ingot source, like that. And here you can see this will be the end of the line. So now we can conveniently just remove this portion if it disturbs us. Very nice. Now let's see here. This is Mark 2 belts. Very good. And we are sure we are at top speed. And just align them. Okay. So now we should be making 150 screws per minute. And of course we cannot merge this to one belt. It's, um, it won't work. So, the reinforced arm plates will require 48 screws per minute. So, uh, and the rods will require 100 screws per minute. And these conveniently produce 100 screws together. And uh, this one should go to the uh, arm plates. So we can underclock this until it makes uh, 48 screws per minute. So we kind of know it will be... Uh, it will be a bit efficient. It's a difference of four percentages, but since it's so easy to set up, we might as well do it. All right, and you might already see here that we are going to take this over the production here, so we can go to do the arm plates, sorry. Uh, because a lot of people just forget that there are conveyor lifts. I know I've been there too, but um, they are your friend you want to use conveyor lifts. They are very, 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 very nice. Let's see if it... I think this might work. Very nice. <laughs> Encroaching clearance a little bit. But anyways, and these ones can be merged and they will fit on a 120 belt. So they will go 100 and we will lead them up here. Great. All right, so let me turn this on. I've added the assembler here. And as this assembler, we're making reinforced iron plates. Um, I have drawn this line of 48 screws per minute over this thing. Looks pretty neat. Input it directly into the machine. 
and we can just input these 24 per minute into this and this one when it has power should now be making reinforced iron plate so that's very nice here we'll have rotors so we need uh, well we need to merge these two machines and input them there and then we're going to take the 100 screws per minute note this is mark 2 lift from here and we neatly merged these outputs uh, here so hopefully that would be very nice and we can see if we can uh, change that thing one is it like one i think it's just one and we'll just connect up this thing to this thing and see if it looks okay we can check that a little bit later then we'll just add a merger here and everything should basically be good to go and there we go now this is merged remember to make your electricity neat and nice you will thank yourself later because otherwise things get the miss things get messy very quickly and it's uh, it easily gets very difficult to understand what is what and where is where and up and down and all that stuff and there we go now of course um, we need to go into this machine and remember we are getting uh, not the 30 per minute and not the 60 per minute no we need to draw down this and underclock it until the output is uh, as close to 4 as we can come we can come to exactly 4 so then we have 24 plates per minute and 48 screws per minute and this should now be efficient this also draws a little bit more power so it's good that the uh, big big machines are efficiently as possible and the smaller machines are less important because they don't draw uh, that many megawatts all right ladies and gentlemen we have four reinforced iron plates per minute and we have four rotors per minute in this closed setup system we have uh, the correct machines the correct clocking the correct amount of belts and everything should be set up and balanced the only thing that's not is of course our iron production our iron production produces 120 um, ingots per minute and that means we can of course underclock it um, we will only need for this setup 93.5 um, per minute which if you would use uh, if you would make the screws in the traditional way would be 93 ingots per minute so what we can do is underclock this um, so we have one two three ninety so this could be like um, 3.5 per minute yeah so we can set it to that uh, to make it efficient and of course uh, as the amount of uh, iron ore per minute equals the ingot we would need to underclock this thing to be uh, producing 90 3.5 as well and then it should be uh, efficient remember however if we do that exact uh, setup it will take longer time for us to flood the system uh, so that everything runs uh, efficiently so it could be a good idea to just let it run for a little bit and you'll get the full balanced uh, the balancing act would basically be faster and you can also flood the system a little bit it doesn't matter one thing we're going to do later on is of course taking that iron and using it for something else instead if these conveyors are a little bit uh, not straight on top what we can do is actually turn them by uh, like 45 degrees and then connect them up because then there is a chance they will be uh, straight and now we just run into this pole so we need to move it but you understand the principle and the less compact you try to build your factories the more free space uh, you let yourself uh, to have which is something i'm trying to work on the easier it will be to make everything look nice and uh, neat like i have this tendency to build a little bit too crammed but i'm slowly improving so this is basically this little setup we now lack one step which is of course to make the smart plating itself uh, which is basically the entire reason for this setup making smart plating 
So, we will of course need to have some mergers and splitters and a smart plating manufacturing facility. And one thing that's quite amazing about smart plating is that it's an excellent material to put in the sink. So, you can't really produce too much of it. If we just look at this little assemble, we can see smart plating requires two reinforced iron plate and two rotors per minute to produce two smart plating per minute. That means we need two machines that are making uh, smart plating. So we need to move half of the resources to another place, which uh, warrants a splitter. There and there, we'll connect it up. And one of these should go into these. And that doesn't work. More like that. And we need to get the resources to the other side. So we of course need to use a lift. Like that. So we can just connect up the, smart, the, the plates to this facility and drag some rotors over here. I will just use uh, different methods just so that they don't collide with each other visually. Which totally isn't something that you ha have to care about, it's just, I don't know, preference. And there we have it! It should now be set up, except we lost power, so I need to fill in my uh, biomass burners. So you might wonder, um, why don't we have any better power source yet? And the other power sources that are better, that you may have seen in uh, some other satisfactory content, or my old videos, or something like that, well, these are unlockable later on, when we have unlocked some stuff we need in the space elevator stage. So, that's the reason. Just threw in some more of my secret material. And that burns very well. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should watch the Silica Crystal Quatch tutorial. Because it's a hidden secret in there. But anyways, this should actually be it. We should now be producing enough smart plating. Which means we can finally... Oh, we need to set that up too. We can finally make the space elevator. You know what sucks? We broke our fuse because when we connected these up, so we'll need to have some more biomass burners. We really want to get out of the biomass burner stage, oh my god. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ooh. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I think we're actually making smart plating. Two per minute. That is, uh, well, four per minute actually. That's still not a lot, but it's, uh, it's something and it's a good start. And remember, this entire system is contained. It's even expandable, like uh, we can produce more ore from this pretty soon. So that's nice. It's time to build a space elevator. It can be hard to find a good location uh, for it, because there is no good location for it. <laughs> it's humongous. You'll need some uh, material, so go to your storages and get something, because while you can have it on your main base thing, it, it's... Mm, we're just gonna temporarily TM put it here, uh, and we can probably find a better location for it uh, later. And there is a little, uh, you can see there is a little interaction panel on one side of it, so we might want that close-ish. Yeah, well, let's put it down right here. Wow. That's a lot of parts. And there we have it. The space elevator is built. This is very epic. Oh! There we have it. Space parts connected up the line. Oh yes! Hook it. There we go. Ah, secure connection. Hopefully it doesn't move the planet, but uh, it should be acceptable. I mean, it's just resources, after all. Very nice indeed. We have our space elevator. So, maybe it's time to check how many uh, parts we have manufactured so far. We can just check out the panel here. Go forth. 
Ah. Space elevator. So basically how it works is we put our 50 pieces of uh, smart plating here, seal it and sand it and we can then go to the next tiers 3 and 4 which brings us loads of new exciting tutorials I do hope. And there we have it, 25 smart plates in this thing and then we should have 25 smart plates. Okay we'll need to wait for the last smart plate. Plate. Because remember, we need 50 of them. So this is basically the type of sacrifice to the sky gods we do in order to unlock the next phase. It's just uh, packaged in a very modern packaging, so it doesn't feel like um, material sacrificing. But uh, it's exactly what it is. We'll just uh, throw these 50 in here. Seal. There we go. Let's go. Send. And now it sends away our beautifully packaged materials. Ah. Oh. Bye bye. A lot of hard work sacrificed to the sky gods. But uh, thanks to this, we will gain technology that we should have had from the beginning, but. What the hell, this is, um, this is our, <clears throat> not at all. Anyways, I'm not sure our working conditions are very perfect here, but it's all fine. So, let us indeed check what's new. Oh, we can see our new objective, the next objective is, even, is already 500 smart plating. So, we might as well produce it, uh lead it into the space elevator and just get rid of the excess uh, by putting it into the sink. Yeah, so that's basically that. But now we have done what we needed to do. We have uh, fixed the space elevator problem, uh, a little bit temporary location, but it takes, you know, it's hard to find a space elevator location that works in any case. So now when we go here, we can see coal power, vehicular transport, basic steel production, and then we have advanced steel production, improved melee combat, hypertube, and logistics mark three. A lot of fun stuff that will be coming up. We will of course select the milestone that is coal power. Yeah, but we'll unlock that at a later time, so uh, with that, I think I will say thanks a lot for tuning in to this little video. And I hope I will be seeing you in future satisfactory guides. We will go through stuff uh, bit by bit, detailed and well explained, and uh, well basically like that so subscribe to the channel there is a new satisfactory tutorial video every saturday and next time i think we'll need to go and uh, check out the smart sink uh, what is the best materials to sink in early game and what should you spend your first fiskit coupons on so with that said, I will say thanks a lot for watching, enjoy your smart plates, box this in, lead out the smart plates to the space elevator's new location, because, you know, the space elevator has inputs, so we can do it automatically. In any way, in, in any ways, and any case, this is Jim Arism. I'm signing out. See you next time.